Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Voyager. Finally, after a long will-they-won't-they they relationship, the Voyager 1 spacecraft has reached interstellar space. As I mentioned in a countdown this past April, the transition has often been under debate, but this time, we have proof it's really for real. I'm Sophie, and welcome to The Countdown. The heliosphere is the region around the sun dominated by solar wind and charged particles. When Voyager 1 left that region, particles from other stars began to cluster around the probe, increasing the particle density. This increase should have told researchers Voyager 1 had officially entered interstellar space. The problem is, the instrument for measuring the particle density is broken. Luckily, a solar eruption created some waves that Voyager could measure, allowing researchers to calculate the particle density indirectly. Even though solar particles are no longer dominating the bold little spacecraft, the sun's gravity still holds sway, which means Voyager hasn't technically left the solar system. To do that, it would have to pass beyond the Oort cloud, where comets originate, which would take roughly 30,000 years. Unfortunately, Voyager's power will run out much sooner. It's due to shut down in 2025. But before that happens, Voyager 1 could still teach us a lot about interstellar space. It costs about $10,000 to send a pound of food to the International Space Station, so it would save a lot of dough if astronauts could grow their own meals. Although scientists have already experimented with vegetables in space, they've never tried to grow plants for actual human consumption. Until now. To test how potential food sources will deal with conditions in space, NASA is sending a vegetable production system, adorably nicknamed Veggie, to the ISS. Roughly the size of a microwave, Veggie can provide light and life support for edible plants without consuming too much power. The system is scheduled to launch in December, and its first mission will be to grow six romaine lettuce plants. With the help of pink LED lights, the leafy greens should be ready to harvest in 28 days. But these space plants are not destined to become salad. Not yet, anyway. The first batch of vegetables will be frozen and shipped to Earth, where scientists will test the lettuce for microorganisms and make sure the leaves will be safe for human consumption. Would you eat a salad grown in space? Let us know in the comments. The vast flat disk of the Milky Way rotates around a bulging center that contains 10 billion stars. And as it turns out, this central bulge is shaped like a peanut. Astronomers discovered the shape when they made a three-dimensional map of the inner part of our galactic disk. This structure is normally obscured by gas and dust, but the European Southern Observatory's VISTA telescope took images in the near-infrared spectrum. This let scientists pick out much fainter stars than would normally be visible. By using this data, which was available publicly, the researchers created the best map yet of the galactic center. Based on their findings, the scientists suggest the Milky Way started out as a pure disk of stars. Then it formed a flat bar. The inner part of the galaxy collapsed to form the cosmic peanut we see today. On September 6th, a rocket set off for the moon, carrying a little laddie. That's L-A-D-E-E, -E, short for NASA's Lunar Atmosphere and Dust Environment Explorer. This robotic craft will fly over the moon's surface at a height of 20 to 50 kilometers, gathering dust and gas molecules on a quest to learn more about the moon's atmosphere. Hold on a second. The moon doesn't have an atmosphere, right? In fact, it has a thin exosphere, made up of helium, potassium, and other molecules. But previous moon missions have observed a strange glow on the lunar surface. This must have come from some material, such as dust, floating above the ground and catching the light. Except there's no wind on the lunar surface. So what could be throwing dust into the air? Scientists think electrical interactions may be propelling the dust skyward. Laddie's observations will help them understand more about this process. How did simple molecules combine to form the complex molecules that make up living creatures? The process might involve a frozen comet crashing into a planet. Amino acids, the building blocks that make up proteins, developed from simpler precursor molecules, and these precursors have even been detected on comets. So what would happen if the comets collided with a solid planet? To find out, researchers mixed up a frozen material similar to a comet and shot it with a steel projectile. This simulated collision created certain simple amino acids. The work is published in Nature Geoscience. 
According to the researchers, this experiment demonstrates that amino acids can form when an icy object and a rocky object collide. This might happen when an icy comet hits a rocky planet, or a rocky meteorite slams into an icy planet, which means life might have started with a crash landing. And that's your countdown. Links to all of these stories are in the description below. Also, don't forget to visit the Space Lab channel on YouTube and subscribe. For Scientific American, I'm Sophie Bushwick, and I can't believe this frog photobombed the launch of the Laddie Moon Probe. Yes, NASA has confirmed it's a real frog, not a photoshopped image. The fate of our foolhardy amphibian friend remains unknown.